everybody, uh, this is Stacy with Be A Blessing and I hope everybody is having a good day so far. I want to share with you information about a sermon I watched, um, not, yeah, this past Sunday, so a few days ago, but I loved the sermon. It was about how to be up close and personal with God. Now, um, it, it also, it gives you like four little things to do to kind of help you be up close and personal with Him. I gotta find it. Um, and it tells you how to speak to God and how um, how to have God speak back to you. Now, I was asked a while ago, how do I know if God's talking to me? Or how do I know when God's talking to me? I don't hear a voice that says, Stacy, this is God. I never hear an out loud voice. My communication with God and His with me is by me reading His Word. Um, I picture His Bible as like His little notes to me. And then by me praying back to Him or me writing in my journal, I'm writing it back. So it's kind of like, you know, God and I are pen pals, if you will. But um, this guy gives you, like I said, four things to do on how to help you connect with God and have a just an up close personal relationship with God. And I mentioned it before that God wants to be a part of everything in our life, not just a part time God or a here and now God or when you need Him God. He wants to be a God of everything. Um, everything you do, trust that in God, whether it be you know your career, your work, your family, your finances, your household, whatever it may be, put that in front of God. Um, you know, there's plenty of times we would, you know, we may talk to our best girlfriend or our sister and we could, you know, we tell her about our day or we complain to her about our hubby or our kid or the dog or our work or what have you. You know, my sister is my outlet. I always, I used to always complain to her. And she, of course, couldn't fix it. She was just an ear for me to vent to. But how about from now on, rather than telling your sister, of course you can tell her too, but how about you tell them to God? You know, just, you know, put them on a, you know, have a plate and put all your problems on a plate and say, here, God. I cannot do this without you. I can't do these without you. And then, you know, you can pray about it with God and have God, you know, trust God that he'll fix them or ask him how to overcome them. Okay, so that's a really good way, you know, to get you started with prayer to God. Um, you know, some of you may be new or not quite sure how to pray. Um, so that's like my little tidbit. Okay, but going back to this sermon, like I said, he gives you four things to do. And I do all four of these. And let me tell you, they work really really well i've been doing all four of these actually since i made in my journal so it was kind of meant to be but the first one he recommends let me back up really fast because i, I want to quote what he says he says when you draw near to god you will hear from god okay did you get that when you draw near to god you will hear from god and it says we can and should be closer to god than anyone else in our life so you want to put god first in your life you know, before your husband, before your children, before anybody else, before your work, before, you know, before your life. You want to put God first in everything you do. And then once, you, you know, once you do that and fully trust God with your life and, you know, your family, then it all works out. Okay, so that's my first thing, or actually his first thing. All right, but number one that he says to do to help you connect with God is to reserve a time and place. Now, I mentioned this before, how important I think it is to have a quiet time and a quiet place to spend time with God. You know, and you want to do that to where you don't have the TV on, you know, your electronic devices are off, you're not going to, you know, everything's off, so there's not going to be any interruptions. If you have an interruption in your quiet time, Satan will come in. Any gap that you create during your time with God, is Satan will come in and he'll find a way, okay? So, um, I know if you are a mom of itty bitties, that's very hard to do. It's, you know, you can, you're lucky if you get one second of quiet time by yourself, let, let alone a few moments with God. If you need to go in the bathroom to do that, go in the bathroom. If you need to go in your car, go in your car. You want to, you know, even ask God, pray to God that he will find, you know, he'll find a place that you can go and talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. Oftentimes what I do, even though I live by myself or just me and my hubby, there's times I'll be home alone and I just feel the urge to go to a park. I'll take, you know, I have like a little um, travel size Bible, you know, that fits in my purse and I carry a little notepad and I'll just go to the park for a little, you know, for a little while, maybe a half hour or an hour. And there is when I really feel God's presence because I'm surrounded by everything he created. You know, I can see the grass. I can smell the grass so the grass is being cut. I can hear kids playing in the background. Um, you know, I can feel the breeze on my face. I can feel the warmth of the sun, feel the coolness of the moon, you know, feel water from the rain. I can see leaves fall. You know, everything around me is God's creation. You know, hearing birds sing, I love all that. So if you want to go to a park for a little bit, go to a park. Um, but it's really important to find a quiet time and place with God. And that's, I'm telling you, once you do that, you will, you'll, you'll hear God speaking to you. Now, he gives a little um, tips here. Uh, he says, you know, you want to have quiet time first thing every day. That's very hard to do. Whether you are single or married with a bunch of kids, you know, it's hard to do that the first thing in the morning. I don't do that the first thing in the morning. 
when I came across this sermon, I stopped there when I was writing it down, and I actually prayed to God. You know, and I asked him, this is what he wants me to do, because normally what I do when I get up in the morning, you know, I open my eyes and I just get awake for a little bit, and I just say a little good morning, hi God, how are you doing, thank you for being here today type deal. Nothing too intense, just like a 20 second hi to God in the morning before I actually get out of bed. Then I go about my day, I have my coffee, and I feed the birds, feed the dog, and I do my, um, my study, and then I go talk to God. But first thing in the morning is very hard. Um, you know, you may have kids you need to take to school or whatever, you know, whatever your circumstance is. And I can't do it in the morning. I probably could, but I don't want to because of, you know, just normal morning things. You know, like I have, I like to have my coffee and I like to go to the bathroom. And once all that is done, my day is done. Then I have plenty of time to spend with God. Um, so I just prayed about it and God knows my circumstances and my situation and my health things and whatnot. And we, you know, we're okay with that. So you don't need to do it first thing every morning. You don't need to do it at the same time every day. Just make sure you do it at least once a day. Even when you're laying in bed, you know, your bed can be your quiet time. If your hubby's sleeping, have that be your time to talk to God, okay? But you want to be alone and just be still, okay? Number two, he says, is to read your Bible. Now, that's a given. Um, you want to read your Bible. That is where God speaks to us. That's God's primary way of speaking to us is through his word. His word is true. His word is accurate, so you can trust what you're reading, now, a lot of you may say, well, you know, I'm reading the Bible, but I'm not really understanding it. I'm not following it. I'm not, I don't get it. Okay. Well, first thing you want to do when you, before you read the Bible is you want to pray to God. Ask Him to help you understand it, to renew your mind, open your heart, and, you know, have you not, you know, have you be able to listen and see what, he, what He's trying to communicate to you. Now, He does give you three little examples here of things you can ask yourself when you're reading a passage from the Bible. This way you kind of understand it, you know, and I'm going to share with you, like I shared before, my little um, summary section. I'm just going to go back to that verse so we can kind of compare it to what he wants us to do. It was uh, Colossians 4, verse 2. Okay? But the first thing, the, the three things he said regarding reading your Bible to help you understand it was, number one, what does the passage say? Okay, what does it say? Number two, what can I take from it? Is there a lesson in there somewhere? Is there a principle to remember? Is there something God wants me to do or not to do? Number three, how can I apply it to my life? Can you use this in your everyday life? Okay, so we go back to Colossians 4, 2, that verse we did last week. It says here, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So if you look here, what does the passage say? Now what I do oftentimes, even if, even if I understand what it says, I often read the passage out loud a few times. I, I find myself, if I read it out loud and I can hear myself saying it, I understand it better. And what I do when I read it out loud, I give it authority. Like I put meaning or a little oomph behind it, okay? So we go back again. I'm going to read it to you normally. It says, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful, okay? I would read it out loud by saying it this way. Devote yourself to prayer. Be watchful and thankful. So I kind of stress or I accent certain words to make the verse seem more dominant, okay? And it works with any verse you read the Bible. If you accent certain words or read it out loud, it works, Okay, like here, Ephesians 5. This one says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Okay, again, I would give that verse authority. Reading it out loud, I would say to myself, or I would say out loud, Be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. They're evil. Okay, so hopefully you can understand that by me reading it out loud, or you reading it out loud, you might, you know, you understand it more. So now we know what the passage says. We understand it. What can I take from it? Is there a lesson in there? Is there a principle to remember? Is, some, is there something there God wants me to do? Now remember, every word in the Bible is God's word. Okay, so whatever you're reading, it's God saying this or God saying that. So if we go back to Colossians 4, verse 2. It says, devote yourself to prayer, be watchful and thankful. That's a very instructional verse. It's very basic and very blunt. Okay, you can clearly see here that God wants you to do three things. He wants you, he wants you to devote yourself to prayer, be watchful, and be thankful. Okay, so now we know what can I take from it. Okay, you can read the verse and you can take it from that. How do I apply it to my life? Can I use it every day? Again, just by reading that verse, you can see, yes, God wants you to devote yourself to prayer. He wants you to be watchful, be alert, and be thankful. Okay, so you can do it that way. You know, that's easier, or you can do it my way by just writing the verse down normally as it appears in the actual word, and then write a sentence about it, like a little summary about it, okay? And then pick a word. Like for that verse, 
my word was pray. So it would, I would just remember to pray every, you know, pray all the time. Okay. Number three is to record your thoughts. Now you can record them with a tape recorder or your phone. It has like a little microphone doing you thing on there. But mainly just jot them down. Keep note of your notes, okay, or of your thoughts. You want to keep a little journal. It doesn't need to be elaborate like this. A little simple book or a scrap paper will do. So you can either do it either way. You can, when you're reading your Bible, you can write down those three things, those three, those three questions. And again, they were, what does the passage say? What can I take from it? How can I apply it to my life? Okay, you can write those down and write the verse down that you're reading and answer the questions. But also with your journal, you can write down, or your notebook, whatever you're going to use, you can write down your thoughts, your feelings, um, you know, what you're getting out of reading the Bible. Um, you know, any prayers that, you know, you, you, that you need answered and the prayers that have been answered and just certain things you can write down and just keep a little diary. And it's nice to look back a year later and look at, you know, review your journal or your diary and then you can see how far you've grown in your faith. Okay, really important to have that. The next one was reach out in prayer. Okay, and here, prayer is hard. You know, it's not easy. It's, it takes time. It takes discipline. It doesn't take, you know, there's no teaching of prayer. There's no wrong way to pray. I always say that. I mean, people may agree, with, you know, disagree, but I think as long as you're speaking to God, he's listening. When I talk to God, I'm not speaking in some wonky language. I'm not using words. Like, I do read the King James Bible, but I don't speak the words like shall and, and be, you know, bestoweth and thy. I don't talk like that. So I'm not going to pray like that. I talk to God like I'm talking to y'all. Okay, and that's really important. But I want to give you another piece of advice. If you have, in the morning, just say the morning, morning you want to wake up. And you're sitting there thinking about what you want to pray about, stop. Because if you need to think about it, Satan will come in. Like I'm telling you, if there's a gap or a crevice, he will come in. Okay? So if you're sitting there thinking, I want to pray to God, what should I ask him for? You know, your phone may ring. The dog might get sick. Or whatever, a knock at the door. That's going to interrupt you. So you're never even going to get this started because that's Satan's way of, get, of coming and interrupting you. He doesn't want us to talk to God. You know, he wants us to not talk to God. You know, by us talking to God, we are putting our faith in him. We're trusting him. We're being honest and open. And we're just, it's like a little love fest between, you know, us and God when we're talking to him in, in, in all sincerity. Satan doesn't like that. He doesn't want us to be close to God. He wants to be anything from that, you know, far away from God as possible. So he will do everything to keep us from praying to God. So what I recommend is you can categorize your prayer if that's easier. You know, you can do like Monday through Friday or Monday through Sunday. And you can say Monday, you know, you're going to pray for your family members. Tuesday, you're going to pray for your coworkers, And Wednesday, you're going to pray for, you know, your church um, leaders and pastors. And Thursday, you're going to pray for, you know, uh, Christian friends. And Friday, your non-Christian friends. Or Saturday, your pets. Or whatever. I mean, you, you can designate a day for a prayer. There's no thought process, okay? You know, because you don't, you know, when you wake up tomorrow morning, if it's Wednesday, you're going to do your co-workers. You don't need to think about who you're going to pray for because it's there in a list. So there won't be any gap. Now, what I also recommend, if you're going to do a list like that, you know, just say your co-workers, for example. And just say, you know, you work with this guy, John, and he comes up to you and says, you know, my dog's not doing really well. Can you pray for my dog? You're like, oh, sure, I will. Sure, I do. Sure, John, I'll pray for your dog. So under your co-worker category, write down John and write down dog. You know, when you pray to God or you ask God for prayer on behalf of John, you want to know what you're asking for. What, you're, what are you praying for? What does John need? Where is John hurting? So if you write down John dog, you'll know John, you know, his dog's not doing very well. Or Judy with her bills or Mary with her, fine, or her, you know, her marriage or, you know, I mean, if you write down one word to describe what they want you to pray for, your prayer is more specific. Okay, and then when you're praying to God, don't go all long-winded. Don't think of the more I talk, the more God listens. Okay, you want to be um, specific with your prayer and be sincere with your prayer. Now, all times what I do as well, when I talk to God, like I said, and I hear God talk back, um, usually that is with him and him and I reading the word together, me having my quiet time by just reading a verse of the passage or writing something down, and then I think about it. I clear my mind, and I just ponder that thought for a little bit, and my thought process is actually God's talking to me. Like, I can hear myself think out that verse out, you know, I can hear myself thinking it, and that's kind of the, um, God putting it in order for me to understand it better. A lot of times what I do as well uh, regarding prayer, if you don't understand a verse, you can pray the verse back to God. Okay, so again, for example, we go back to that Colossians 4.2 verse, or any verse would work. 
But just say Colossians 4, verse 2, it, it says, the witness of the prayer, be watchful and be thankful. I suppose you're not quite sure what that means. You know, remember, remember when we were in school, the teacher would often say, well, turn this sentence into a question, you know? That's kind of what I do. I, I turn the prayer, or I turn that, that verse into a question back to God in prayer. So I would say to God, I'd read the verse again, and I would just ask God what he's what he wants. What he's what what is this meaning? You know, he wants me to devote myself to prayer. How do I devote it? How do I devote? What do I devote? Uh, what does it mean to devote? If you want to look at the word look up the word devote, look up the word devote so you understand the meaning behind the word, but ask God to help you devote. You don't understand what that means. The next part, being watchful. What does God want you to see or not see? Okay? And thankful. Of course we're thankful for everything that we have and everything he's done for us. But, you know, how do you do these three things together? How do I devote myself to prayer? How do I be watchful? And how do I be thankful if I can't see what I'm supposed to be watchful for? You know what I mean? So I pray that back. Okay? And that does work. It does help with, um, you know, God speaking to me or him or, or you know, or either way. You just, I, I like doing it that way. And then there's times when I read my Bible at nighttime. Not really studying in the Word, or just I just want to read the Bible, uh, just for you know my place of happiness. You know, it might be my coffee chair with a cup of tea. You know, I, I'll have you know not this book, but I have my Bible and like a little notepad. You know, like the little little tablets. And as I'm reading the Bible, or reading a chapter or a passage, if I come across a verse, I'm not quite sure of. So there's verses I don't even understand. You know, there's books I don't understand, like Leviticus. I mean, you need like a whole bunch of biblical professors behind you to get you through that book. You know. But there's, you know, certain verses here and there, no matter how much word study I do, no matter how much I pray, that, pray it out loud or talk it out loud or say it back with authority, there are still times I don't quite get it. So I'll just read the Bible or read what I'm reading, and I'll just write down that verse. Just say it's Matthew, I don't know, 2, 5. I'll write down the word Matthew 2, 5. So I know to go back to that. Then I'll go back, and I ask God, what's he meaning in that? And again, I'll, I'll just say that, I'll say that passage out loud, and I'll define it. Like, I'll put it in a prayer form. Turning that, turning the past into a question. I'll ask God what He's meaning by so and so, or by doing this, or by doing that. Okay, and that does help. Um, but like I said before, that's what this channel is. It's about you know me sharing ideas that work for me. Hopefully, you guys can share ideas that work for you, and then it's all one big happy family, and we'll all learn from one another. That's what I want the channel most to be. Not about me blabbing, but I want this channel to be a place where all of us can connect. You know, we can feel you know we can feel close with one, one another. We can fellowship with each other. We can. You know, feel free to ask each other questions and not feel weird or, or insecure about asking the questions. Um, like, I, I will share what works for me and what does not work. You know, like, uh, my my uh, quiet place has just got finished yesterday. We got the flooring done. I'll show you that. And, you know, I cannot stress how important it is to have a quiet place and, and how important it is to pray and just to listen. You know, like, when I did that video the other day, pray, thank, pray, thank, there's times we pray, but we never thank. Well, what about we pray and never listen? You know, like we prayed to pray and then we're like, okay, goodbye God, we're all, we're all, we're all with our life. Maybe there, maybe when you're praying, God wants to talk to you. You know, so if you just pray or just talk to God like I'm talking to you guys, you know, use your normal voice, your normal language, pray to God that way, then you just take a few moments to sit there in, in complete silence. And it's such a relaxing feeling just to sit there and be quiet and be still and be rested. Then again, your mind will work. Your mind will start thinking. You know, and then that's how you will hear from God, okay? But I wanted to uh, quickly share this sermon with you guys, because like I said, it was, a, it was a zinger. I loved it, and I thought I had to show you guys. So um, anyway, that is uh, this week's video. Like I said, I hope you guys are all doing well. Have a great week, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.